Hello and welcome. This is um, done by. Are we done by Tim Production? No, it's on Grant. No, oh, it's unfortunate. This is the Grant Smiley YouTube channel. This is, the, this is the Grant Smiley YouTube channel. I am not Grant Smiley. I am Albert Bolter. Uh, I was at Walmart today uh, buying some groceries and I found his Taylor Swift biography by Wendy Logia. And I figured it'd be a nice read for all of you lovely people. Taylor Allison Swift was born on December 13th, 1989, in West Re <laughs> Shut up. Reading, Pennsylvania. Her parents named her after James Taylor, a famous musician. How perceptive of them. A lot of love surrounded Taylor and her little brother Austin. The Swifts did many activities as a family. They spend time reading books, visiting new places, and having fun outside. Ah, oh, it looks like a lot of fun. Christmas was one of Taylor. Christmas was one of Taylor's favorite holidays. Please cut that out. Christmas was one of favorite. God, stop. Christmas was one of Taylor's favorite holidays. And what made the holiday season even more exciting was that her family lived on a Christmas tree farm. I really love Christmas. I wish it was all year round. I think the dog's saying that. Everyone pitched in at Christmas time. Taylor's dad mowed the fields on his tractor. Taylor's job? Picking up praying mantis egg pods off the trees. The Swifts didn't want anyone to get a buggy surprise on Christmas morning. God, come on. Shit. <laughs> As a kid, Taylor tried lots of different things. She rode horses, she acted in plays, she wrote poetry. But when she learned how to play the guitar, she knew she had found her new passion. When Taylor has a goal, nothing stops her. She was a big fan of country stars Faith Hill and Shania Twain, and she had discovered that both musicians had started their careers in Nashville, Tennessee. Oh, wouldn't you know? Is she... Is Taylor from Nashville? Is Taylor from... I thought she was from Pennsylvania. Oh, shit, you're I right. It, shut up. Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> shut the fuck up. <laughs> that was all 10-year-old needed to know. She asked her parents to take her to Nashville. Oh, well, that would have... <laughs> God. <laughs> she asked them every day, and finally, Taylor and Austin... And, and, fi and finally, Taylor and Austin, there for spring break. They drove up and down Music Row. Oh my god, I'm, oh, I'm gonna take these off. I'm having a tough time. Um, for an area with country music, recording studios, and businesses. While Taylor's mom and brother waited in the car, Taylor ran into the office of various record labels and hotted out CDs she made of her music. Okay, I'm having I'm having a tough time, guys. No, it's going it's going well. Great. Comforting. <laughs> Great. Uh, this is you now. So. Okay. I don't want to take over. So. It's all me. He makes you read the last page. Taylor performed anywhere that would have, anywhere that would have her, including fairs, festivals, and ball games. But sometimes following dreams means doing things other people don't understand. Girls at school were mean to Taylor. Her classmates thought she was weird to like country music so much. This made Taylor sad, but it didn't stop her from doing what she loved, even if it was country music. When Taylor was 13, something incredible happened. RCA Records wanted to work with her. Taylor and her family said goodbye to Pennsylvania and moved to Nashville. Her dream of becoming a country music star was about to come true. For Taylor, writing songs was just as important as singing them, but because she was young, the, the songs, nope, because she was young, the, uh, the record company wanted her to sing other people's songs, and they thought she, she could wait until she was older before she made her own album. Taylor didn't agree much. 
One night, Taylor performed at Nashville's uh, Bluebird Cafe. She sang songs from her own... She sang from her... She... Cut. She sang some of her own songs, and some songs from other singers. She caught the eye of a music executive in the crowd, who was forming a new record label. Guess who he signed up to make an album? Taylor Swift. Taylor's debut album, Taylor Swift, came out when she was just 16. She was very excited every time she heard her songs on the radio. Her next album, Fearless, was a top-selling record of the year and made Taylor a huge star. Taylor is fearless. When she went on her first concert tour, she took the music world by storm. One of Taylor's biggest strengths is storytelling. Her songs tell stories that many people can relate to. Taylor wrote all the songs to her the third album, Speak Now. Listening to Taylor Swift's album is like hearing her diary of being sung out loud. Yeah, yeah, what the fuck? I thought this was gonna be like a minute. <laughs> Spending so much fucking time on this. Many of Taylor's songs are inspired by her life, like The Best Day, a song about growing up in a loving family and having a supporting mom. Taylor and her mom, Andrea, are very close. They talk about everything. No one has known Taylor longer, or knows better. What? No one knows Taylor longer than her mother. <laughs> Is that what it says? That's just, that's dumb to say. Don't insult something Taylor Swift-related. <laughs> she didn't write this. It's, just... it's about her. <laughs> Or knows her better than her mom. I mean, they're not very interesting facts. <laughs> they're just like her mom knows her longer than anyone else. <laughs> she's not it's that. probably probably a guess. <laughs> uh, it's not a book review, bro. Read the book. Read the fucking book. <laughs> I'm just saying these facts aren't very interesting. She she wrote music and she performed them. Like holy shit. <laughs> but she was born on a Christmas tree farm. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Trying new things and taking risks is important to Taylor. Even though country music was her first love, she soon took a big chance and recorded a pop album called 1989. It was peak. Taylor never lets anyone... No. <laughs> of course it doesn't say it's... I don't know. Sorry. Taylor never lets anything hold her back from creating music she loves. Yeah, you got something to say. You're <laughs> just you're struggling. A little bit. <laughs> Taylor also loves sharing things with her fans. They know that her lucky number is 13. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> she often hides clues and symbols in her music and videos. Oh god. Don't don't encourage them. Um <laughs> For a few of her albums, she surprised special groups of fans by inviting them to secret parties to listen to the albums before anyone else. They got to hang out at her house, meet her family, and even bake cookies together. <laughs> it's a very specific fact. Sorry, I went to Taylor Swift's house to bake cookies yeah. for her mother. These are very young children. When Taylor Swift likes something, she tells everyone about it. One thing she really likes, question, yep, cats. Taylor has a big reputation for speaking out against racial injustice and encouraging people to vote. She stands up for other artists and herself, even when it's tough. She's not just a superstar, she's a trailblazer. So true. Taylor's hard work has paid off. Her albums have sold millions of copies. She won multiple Grammys. She traveled around on the world and oh my god, I'm I'm having a tough time here. Ooh. It's the last page. Ready to get that last page I know, no no I got it. Got it? Okay. I got it. Made people happy with her music. What will she do next? When you're Taylor Swift, the sky's the limit. But not anyone else. Let's make sure he reads the lover diary next. <laughs> This journal belongs to Taylor Swift. <laughs>